hello friends welcome to engineering tutorial in today's video we are going to discuss about another uh, elementary signal which is used in the analysis of uh, analog or digital systems okay so today we are going to discuss about the unit impulse function okay so the impulse function is the most important I would say uh, signal which is used in the analysis of uh, signals in the signals and systems whole uh, area okay now this impulse function it is also called as Dirac Delta function okay it is also called as Dirac Delta function now what is this uh, unit impulse function so let us draw it suppose we have this uh, first we'll draw the continuous time representation then the discrete time representation so we have this time axis the unit impulse function it exists only at t equals to 0 in the form of this okay this is the continuous time representation of the unit impulse function I would say the impulse function now here this signal it tends or approaches infinity at t equals to 0 it means the magnitude of the signal is actually infinity it's undefined okay so most important thing to remember about the unit impulse function or the Dirac Delta function is that it exists only at t equals to 0 and the magnitude of the signal approaches infinity okay now this Dirac Delta function is also represented as the integration okay the integration from minus infinity to plus infinity the integration of this Dirac Delta function is equal to 1 this is where the term unit comes into play it means the area of the impulse function the area of the impulse function is unity the unit impulse function this is very important this expression integration of the impulse function from minus infinity to plus infinity is equal to 1 and this is where the term unity comes into play it means the area of the impulse function is equal to 1 and another thing to remember that the magnitude of this impulse function at t equals to 0 is infinity means we don't know what exactly the value is it's a very high value and this is the continuous time representation okay the continuous time representation okay so there are two important things to remember about the continuous time representation of the Dirac delta function okay let me just write it down here so the continuous time domain representation of the impulse function can be represented as delta t is equal to infinity at t equals to 0 and 0 otherwise 
this is the first okay this is the first and uh, please note that this is the continuous time representation for discrete time the representation will be different it has a bit of a difference in the discrete time representation and the second most important thing is the integration of the unit impulse function from minus infinity to plus infinity delta t dt is equal to 1 and this is where the term unit impulse function comes into play okay it means the area of impulse function is equal to 1 this integration signifies that okay now another important thing related to the impulse function is that why it is called as impulse okay impulse so we the word impulse the impulse function can also be viewed as a pulse signal okay it can be viewed as a pulse signal with zero width okay with zero width this is another uh, <coughs> representation another way of looking at the impulse function the impulse uh, signal it is a pulse signal with zero width suppose we know that a pulse look looks something like this isn't it a pulse signal looks something like this this is the width of the pulse signal isn't it let us say the width be w this is the width of the pulse signal now if this width becomes 0 if this width becomes 0 then we will get the impulse signal is not it if width is becomes 0 we will get the impulse signal at t equals to 0 this is a normal pulse signal And this is the impulse with width is equal to 0. This is the correlation between a pulse signal and an impulse signal. So, the impulse signal can be viewed as a pulse signal with 0 width. Okay. So, this is the continuous time representation of a impulse of the impulse function of the impulse signal now we will discuss about the discrete uh, time uh, whole thing in the discrete time domain so now we'll discuss about the discrete time representation of the impulse function okay so the in the discrete time representation the impulse function looks something like this okay here it is n okay not t n it means discrete time okay here also the impulse function it exists at n equals to 0 as in the continuous time it existed only at t equals to 0 okay here it is it exists at n equal to 0 but the difference comes here here the magnitude of the impulse function is equal to 1 this is the discrete time representation Let us draw the continuous time representation here as well. 
for easier understanding. Here, continuous time t at t equals to 0. Here, the magnitude is equal to 1. Here, the magnitude is equal to infinity because it is approaching infinity at t equals to 0. But here, the magnitude is equal to 1. This is the main difference between the continuous time representation and the discrete time representation. In the continuous time, the magnitude of the impulse signal is approaching infinity, but here it is 1. In the discrete time, both the discrete time and the continuous time, the signals they exist only at t equals to 0, here at n is equal to 0, that is same, but the difference lies in the magnitude. In the continuous time, the magnitude is approaching infinity, here the magnitude is 1. So, in the discrete time representation, we can represent the discrete time impulse function as 1 at, uh, sorry, uh, n equals to 0, okay, n equals to 0 and 0 uh, otherwise, means not n not equal to 0, okay. But here, in the continuous time, it is delta t is equal to infinity at t equals to 0 and 0 at t not equals to 0. Okay. So, this is the continuous time and discrete time representation of the impulse function and the difference between the two. So, always remember the magnitude of the discrete time impulse function is 1 at n equals to 0 and 0 otherwise and that of the continuous time impulse signal is infinity at t equals to 0. It means it is approaching infinity at t equals to 0 and it is 0. Uh, everywhere else. Okay. So, this is some of the basic things related to impulse function, which is a very important signal for the analysis of uh, signals and systems. Uh, we have many more uh, signals, elementary signals to cover. So, I hope you like this video and please subscribe my channel engineering tutorial for more such videos related to electrical, electronics, instrumentation and communication engineering. Have a great day. Thank you very much.